Just got a normal card base here. <coughs> so Manish that in half while I'm waiting to see if anyone else is joining us. I don't want to start just yet. <coughs> I'm Cheryl Algy from Kerrang in Northern Victoria, Australia. Let me talk about the inspiration for my card. Last Sunday, I hosted a like a bit of a charity event for my girls because um, as most of you know we've been isolated by flood waters um, some roads are open most roads are closed it's you I mean you can get there if you go a long way round we're cut off between here in Swan Hill which is about 60 kilometers now which takes about 40 minutes normally now if you want to get to Swan Hill you there's two different routes you can go which um, takes anywhere from two and a half to three hours. So, yeah, so which is inconveniencing lots of people. Lots of people have medical appointments in Bendigo. So, and if you've got elderly folk to take, it's not, it's not so great. I'm just looking at my, I've got glue on my new bone folder. Um, that's okay. So the inspiration for my card, I hosted a, um, a free day for my my ladies and um, Judy the lovely Judy came uh, was one of the ladies we had six ladies and um, she brought some beautiful double point cards that she had created using the uh, if you remember we used to have the double the nested labels they were called with the point there the point at the top and the point at the bottom, which I don't have anymore um, because I sold mine off because they were deleted. So I thought she had instructions for her card um, that she kindly gave to a couple of the ladies present. And I just thought I might, so these pieces here, this is, I've already gone ahead and cut these at 10 centimeters. By, and then we revert to to imperial by three inches, which would be. Um, I wanted to stick to the inches because I must have got this. I'm not sure where I got this from because I have, I have a video on this a while back. So I looked at my video to see what I had done, um, and mine is going to be a full card whereas Judy's I think was just the front but it's up to you you don't have to do a full card if you don't want to so you're going to line it up on the three inch side at one inch where are we the old eyes aren't so good today and score there don't want to score too much on one of these I had to toss because I scored too much and the paper was ripping. Now this isn't a step that I've ever included before but I found it helpful. I turned it around to the 10 centimetre side and I just put a little tick mark at the 5 centimetre mark and I don't know if I've even got it. I don't think I even got that on there. I didn't want to go too deep. I think I got it that time. So I'll do the same on both sides. So the one inch, three inch side, I'm going to score all the way along that one inch. Just not, not too much. And I've probably gone too much, but we'll soon find out. And then five centimeters, not on the, it's on the opposite side. There's my score line there. So on the opposite side to where I scored, I just went, you'll see why in a minute. I just went there. Hmm, I think I might have a bit of hay fever. I've got a bit of a, a bit of a rippy nose. Now, I can, where I've put my little score, I can see that. Now you want to, it does make it easier, I feel. Don't squish it down too hard until you find because you are going to see it from the other side just gently give it a push I always find one side goes down easy and then I have trouble with the other side for some reason you want to put this into a 
hint or point, but you want this. I'm not explaining that very well. Um, you want this line here to line up with your score line, okay? And that's pretty good. Yeah, let's see where the other one's sitting. You just got to play with it a little. And then once you know, once you think you've got it pretty good, not sure how good mine is, but it'll be good enough. So that's now this paper is the texture chic paper, tech chic, or however you want to say that. I'll do the same on both of them. It's actually a really easy card. I'd forgotten how easy it was. This is probably the hardest part of it. It's not quite up to the line. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Might have overlapped a bit there. It's supposed to overlap. That's that's okay. Um, now I'll grab my silicon mat and my wet glue. Any questions on that? Hopefully you could see what I was doing. Thanks everyone, this is great. Just, this is probably how my bone fob has got glue on it because I just, um, you want that to be down flat, you don't want it popping up or anything. So I'll do these, both of these while well, I've got them here. And I've got some other samples I'll show you as well, just... Um, using different different dyes. I don't really want to make any more Christmas cards, but I sort of I sort of can't help it now. Oh, now I've got glue on the fingers, which you know I don't like that part of this. Now for my card, mine's going to have. And inside, actually, I'm going to see what I did on my other one. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Up. I have joyful wishes inside. And I was going to get out my... Okay. My stamps. And I didn't. Stamps and my dies. And it's so their joyful wishes inside. Get this lining up those words there on the line so that I hopefully get this straight. And this is obviously Evening Evergreen, and I'm using, um, <clears throat> what am I using? Fresh Fraser. I always forget the name of this. This ink, this colour, I should say. So hopefully I'll get this straight. Where's a bit of scrap paper so I can see whether I have got that on the block straight. Yeah, that's pretty good. Line that up on my paper straight. Oh, everything's sticking to me today. And you want a small greeting because you don't want to be able to see that I'll scrap my messier one. Um, you don't want to be able to see that through your uh, visible through the. Um, so if you're uh, part of the card that we're going to have down over the top of that, didn't explain that very well, did I? Um, now, <clears throat> I thought I'd use the same stamp set for all the sentiments, which I didn't on the other one, but I meant to. I forgot. It's a season of magic and wonder. 
I'm going to use that on the inside, which also comes from the Joyful Flurry set. And the inspiration for the decorated piece of this card, parts of this card came from the the holiday catalog. Okay, I'll put that there. Bring in my messy one. I want to do some snowflakes. I think I used the bigger one, but I'll use this one. This, so that's that's going to be my inside piece. So I'm just going to do that. Now I'm inking up again because if you stamp off on the edge, you're only going to get. Oops, I did it twice. I didn't want to do it twice, and that was on the edge of my board. Let's try that again. So if I'd can't do it now, can I? I'll show you on my envelope what I meant. So here's full strength. We've got to have snowflakes up the top, don't we? So I'm going half off there. Now if I had just stamped, where are we? on this clean bit so you can see what I mean. You probably all know this anyway. If I'd stamped like that, you would get some bits of it dark and some bits of it light, which we don't want that. So, so if you want it lighter, I think I'll just go full strength. But if you wanted it lighter and you wanted it to be on the edge, you'd have to stamp, stamp it up and stamp it off. Otherwise you'd have just a half a snowflake like I've, like I've just explained okay now this one is this measures I think it's 10 centimeters it's a little one it's actually just my normal my normal map from a card 10 centimeters by it's 14.4 it's actually a bit shorter Oh, no, it's about 14.4. doesn't really matter. It's not going to make any difference if you had it a bit longer. Just whatever, whatever um, measurements you normally use. And then this is going to, I just want to make sure this is going to be not, not too far out. No, that's fine, which it should be because they're both 10 centimetres, right? I'll just do one at a time because I want to have a little bit of wiggle room here. And I'll just turn it over the back and make sure I haven't got any, and I have got a little smidge out there. So then I'll just make sure that stays. Oftentimes, when you think you've got it straight and all lined up and everything and you put it on your paper and then you leave it and you come back to it it's often times it's moved on me so make sure you've got to nail it down first so then I'll turn that around and get that on the other end of my white piece as you can see it wouldn't really matter the length of this it's just whatever your preference is. And if you fold it down like that, it's going to, you're going to know that you've got it anchored and down in the right spot. So there's, so you could just have your card like that. And when you put your piece on the top, you just lift it up. But um, I prefer to anchor that to my card base. Like so, I'll do that now. Yeah. 
further. Oh, it's a bit hard to see on that. There we go. Okay, now I think I need the bone folder anymore. What else did I do? I've got a piece of evening evergreen that I've cut with my scallop contours dies, and I've got a piece of fresh freesia that I've cut with my layering rectangle dies, and you can see that, see where the stitching is? It fits perfectly inside there. So then what I did was I got my she can find where she put them my dies. So, so I think I explained to you last last week, did I? And oh hang on. Yes, um, I did and which one was it now? I actually did this so that I knew what each snowflake did and I've put that in the front of my where I keep my dies. See some of them, let's move that out the road so I can explain to you. Some of them don't cut out completely. There's only one, there's two that do, I think. Two, although there's maybe, let me see. It's that one. So that one does, obviously. And you get two of them in this set. And this one. This one doesn't. There's one that does. That one. Which one's that one? That one, that one. Yeah, that one's that one. I didn't use that either. And this one. This here. There's another one that cuts. Oh, this one. This one here. This one here must be the only one that cuts out. You can stamp them and cut them out. So that one does that, and this one does this. So you have to think about how you want to use these. So this was this was the one I think I used, and this one. I've got to see. Yep, yeah, it is. So what I did, and yet yeah, before I forget, where are they? Nothing like being organised, is there or not? Um, actually, it's in here. What I, I had forgotten was, if you're looking for snowflakes, the chick dies, they have got heaps of snowflakes. I made some other cards and I was delighted to find in this set that I had forgotten about, I've got one, two, three that cut out the whole snowflake they don't just cut out portions so you get two of those ones so i have used them in probably the cards i'm going to be showing you next friday i'm so far ahead i'm so organized <laughs> so far ahead i've even got next friday's organized as well go in there you so there's that the same snowflake this is copied off the, the um, not the same as what they did, but it's the same idea that I've stolen. One there, they had one up there. I might turn that around so it looks a bit different, maybe. One there, and they had one kind of, kind of like that. a little baby machine hmm, got some green bits these girls didn't clean it very well for me on Sunday did they never mind One 
do. I think it's going over my stamping, but I don't think that's going to matter. out of there as well. Okay, now I don't think I need that again, do I? Oh yes, I do. Need it again. I'm not quite finished my stamping yet. I've got to do my greeting for the front. Okay, so then you can just pop these little prongs up like that. What am I doing? Then I'll do my greeting, which is also out of that set. I don't know why I've got my primer out of that. I think I need that. And we've got our Happy Christmas. Try and stamp that as straight as I can too. Not that it matters because I'm going to die cut that with a little nice little die that's in this set as well. Let's see if that's going to stamp properly. Yep. Oops, I've got a mark on it. I burnt it. So perhaps don't press as hard. See what happens there. Yeah, that's better. It's crooked, but it's better. <laughs> okay. Right. Now we're going to cut that out with this little die, and we can make it straight. Like that. Now, where's my little bits of washi? What I like to do when I've got something like that is kind of line the bottom of this up with the bottom of your stamping. I'm going to put another one because it's inclined to shift. I'll have to bring back my little baby boss. Where's my platform now? Oh, here it is. Here it is. Hopefully that's coming out straight. these two, two adhesive back sequins and gems if you notice on I should tell you what page it is in the catalog so you can follow what I'm talking about yeah. it's this one on page 19 that I'm kind of copying I'm not quite sure what they used underneath there I could look it up, but I was too lazy. I just used on my sample card, I just used a piece from the, the Snowflake Vellum. So if I can grab that easily, we'll use that. I'll just see if I can get these on quickly. 
These were a little bit challenging too, I have to tell you. A little bit tricky. Actually, I might put the, I'll put that one down. I might put the sequin. What I might use, let's bring in the green this time. I've got purple on my other one, or um, Fresh Freesia, is its proper name. I thought I might as well use these up, because I'm probably not going to use them. Once, once Christmas is done, I'll probably find them hard to use. So, just kind of go around like this. Looks like I might be having eight on this one, am I? Oh no, I think it's only six. you down. These are just so pretty. And they had another one down here. Again, I'm going to put the sequin. I actually really like the green. It really makes it pop. You'll see when I show you my sample card the difference in the colour of the gems. Well, these aren't gems, they're sequins, so adhesive back sequins. So I'll go this way. And then, oh, come on, this way. This way, and then I wasn't sure if I wanted to put one here, but I thought, you know, it, why not? It just, it just um, makes the card look so pretty. I'm losing it all over the place, aren't I? Probably haven't got that positioned correctly. You wouldn't believe how long it took me to, to get them right when I first started. Don't want to be taking up too much of your time. I'm just trying to do it quickly. Oh, get off. That's gotcha. I think I've got that wrong too, have I? I'll soon find out. Oh, the old eyes aren't so good this evening. Come on. Get off. They are very sticky, these things. Which is good. Sometimes they don't have enough adhesive on them, and that's maddening too. Ah. Did I tear that? So strong. That'll be fine. Let us see whether we need to fossick for a piece of paper. I don't think we do. I think we're going to go without that. I think it's just as nice without. So let's adhere that to that with um, no dimensionals on this bit. But I think I'll dimension up my sentiment. And I'll pop that one there. Dimension. wasn't a mark that I couldn't remove. Um, oh gosh, maybe I've got that too. Oh, I'd be right if I just do that. Don't, no, maybe I'll get that off. Forgot that. I don't need to have it 
that close to the edge because if I want that edge hanging over it will glue my card shut I'm just gonna see if that's showing no that's all right So we just want to, I had this half over there, so maybe I'll do that. I know that's not quite right and that will annoy me, but I'll fiddle with that in a bit. Um, now, what's next? What's next? What's next? Next is, we are going to just put a little bit of glue there. Not too, too much. Just put it bit in the peak here. You probably could go up a little higher on this one. But if you've got other dies, you want to be careful where you're putting it. So you just want to line that up either side and as well as top and bottom. So you've got that inside there. Press it down. You don't want it going anywhere. And I did even tie a little bow. Which way did I tie that? It's gotten squashed in the... in the envelope. So, just, whoops. And just, maybe it there. And I like to just do a little teeny bit of glue so that in in the heat sometimes your glue dots can go brittle it looks like that's the end of them I know there's a couple still on there so if I put that back in there I'll need to use those ones up so then Grab my bow. Place it there. Just find with the glue dot as well as the glue, you don't have to wait forever to it for it to adhere properly. So then I can just use a bit of nail. Still got a bit of that to use up. We we'll just put that on the inside. Okay, so that's our cute little card. So this is my other one, which is just the same, except I've got a piece of the paper underneath. I don't think it makes a huge lot of difference. I'll put that one on top, seeing as that's the one I've just made. And I tried with some other dies. This was the first one I did. I've used the um, frame florets with that, and I've used... Just grab those and show you. Um, they're called season something. Seasonal labels is that's where I got the dye from. That that goes with that beautiful Christmas set with the pine cones. And I didn't have a uh, an edge bit for that, so I've just sponged it with. Um, Early espresso, because of how I did the flowers, I stamped them in early espresso, then I um, I coloured them with crumb cake blends, and then I've used some copper. I haven't pushed the centres out of the leaves either, so yeah, so it gives it a bit of, yeah, so for a special person on a special day, and that one also I haven't stamped on the inside of that one. So that's that one, and then I did yet another Christmas card I did with a circle. So we've got, these are just cut out of the paper, the holly leaves paper. So I've just got joy, Merry Christmas. So this paper here is from the, it was retired, but it's now in the online store. And I'm not quite sure how much it is, but it's, called Harvest Meadow. So that's where I've got the 
the um, soft succulent paper from that and that's got the yellow on the back and oh it's also where I got the paper for this one too so that's that paper which is it's got that wheat paper the yellow on the back it's got that one and this is the one I used that one's in um, midnight misty mi uh, misty moonlight that one it's a retired in colour and this one is what I've used here. So yeah, but I'm sure you've got lots of papers you could use, but I think I think I've showed you most of them. <coughs> so I was glad to be able to use that, seeing as you guys can get it. At the moment I just looked when I was doing this card, these cards, and you could get it then. So pretty sure it's still available in Australia anyway. If you're somewhere else you may not be able to get it. But um yeah, and Joy fitted nicely. There was other greetings that I could have used there, but I haven't used that um, stamp very much. So, And I've got the Merry Christmas in the middle. And you open it up. I've used, I've fussy cut this out of the paper as well. The edge bits to put inside my card. I think it's quite nice too. Okay, so that was a quick little one. Thanks, Judy, for bringing that to to our, well, it wasn't a class, to our get-together on Sunday and sharing it with everyone. I'm sure everyone appreciated it and I I hope you'll enjoy that I've shared a different way if you don't, if you happen to not have the nested labels dies. Okay, um, any questions, anyone? Thanks, Margaret. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Denise. Thanks, Margaret Griffith. Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah. yeah, I'm a bit of a homebody, so getting out isn't really worrying me. If I had to go to Swan Hill for an appointment or something, it would be. We can get to Bendigo, so there's one plus. And it's not like we can't get there. If we want to go on Cook's tour, we can get there. So, <laughs> so thanks, everyone, for joining me. I really appreciate your support. I'll be back next Friday, same time, I hope same station. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.